Sri Vishnu Sahasranam, name 739, Loka Bandhu, which you can easily understand. Loka means the world, the whole universe. Bandhu means friend. That's the general understanding of the word. Reminds us of Jagat Bandhu, which is a uh, common name by which Lord Jagannath is addressed. Mm. He's Jagannath and Jagat Bandhu. Next name is Lokanath. Although the general use of the word Bandhu in modern Indian languages is friend, the commentators, they take it more to mean the relative. He's the relative. He's related to everyone in this world. So by this name, we get an insight into the mutual, mutual and inseparable relation between us, every single one of us, and the Supreme Lord. The relationship is that we're all relation. We're all related to him. We can't not be related to him. Even if we deny it, want to forget it, uh, deny even that there is God, we might even deny that we exist. There are some Buddhism, <laughs> they don't accept any existence of any Atma, what to speak of Paramatma. Or we may want to say that uh, we're just, this bodies are just a combination of chemicals and nothing more than that. So, Or we may want to say, as the Mayavadis say, that yeah, relatives are there in this world, but that's all Maya, which is true. But then they say any relationship is Maya because there's just uni unitary oneness. No. How the Mayavadis translate the, the, these names, it's, it's really mental somersaults. How you, when Loka Bandhu means he's the friend of everyone, but then why do they bother chanting this at all when they think that there's ultimately everything is all one? So it's the relationship, is the Supreme Lord and the, the relationship is intrinsically one which is very intimate. Now, in the culture I come from, we don't, I was born in, in Britain in this life, so we don't have very close family relationships. But here in India, there are names for, for all kinds of relatives, I just say. Your, your mother-in-law's brother or something like that. That's, I, I could never come to grips with it. There are so many terms, and then they're, they're largely different in Bengali and Hindi and different languages. And it becomes a bit bewildering for me. But Krishna is a very close relative. Pitaha masya jagato mata tata pitamaha. Krishna says, I am the of the universe, Jagat, Loka, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. Lo, Sarva Loka means all the planets, so the universe. So Krishna is the father of the universe. That Dhata means the, in this verse, it means the creator of the universe. So the father is mentioned separately. That means he's not just a creator like someone making products in a factory or something like this. He's not just an engineer, but he has a very intimate, loving, overseeing relationship with every living being. He, father, mother, Pitamaha, he's the, the grandfather. So in this way, he's uh, everything. Tumi Saravamai, you know, he's everything to us. Everyone, deny it, accept it. In the Su Subhalo Upanishad, also, similar statement is there. Mata pita brata nivasa sharanang suhrit gatihi narayanaha. 
Narayana, the Supreme Personality of God. Supreme Personality of Godhead, yes, but also here, uh, mother, father, brother, abode, shelter, friend, and the final goal of everyone is Narayana. So similar statements are there in in, in in Gita, repeatedly, I already Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, but in the same verse, Lord Krishna says, Suhridam Sarva Bhutanam. He's the, the very good friend. Suhrit means just he has a good heart, good heart's feelings for everyone. Samoham Sarva Bhuteshu Name Dveshu Stina Priyaha. He's equal to everyone. So and one way you could take this verse is he's saying he's neutral, but he's saying I, one way that this verse can be taken is that he doesn't hate or he doesn't dislike or like anyone intrinsically more. Not the, When he says no one's dear to me, he already said suhridam sarva bhutanam. He's the very close friend of everyone. So when he says no one is dear to me, it can be understood in this way, or should be understood in this way, that yes, he is dear to everyone. He's not cancelling out that and said, "No, ah, uh, I, I said I was dear, but I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be dear to you anymore." Finished. That was a few chapters ago, so forget it. No, it means that he's, he treats everyone equally. He doesn't intrinsically see one as more dear than another. It depends on how everyone reciprocates with him. So in this sense. He's Vatsala, or the uh, affectionate to everyone. That name has already come in Vishnu Sahasranam. And the last name in this verse, which we're almost getting to, after this name, Loka Bandhu, we have Lokanath, and Madhava, and then Bhakta Vatsala. And Bhakta Vatsala, I plan to speak on that at some length. A very important name, who the one who is very affectionate to his devotee. So Loka Bandhu, he's the, the, the friend, the relative of everyone. Um, Sri Vivi Ramanujan, commenting on this verse, gives several quotes from the Divya Prabandams. I won't attempt to pronounce the Tamil. Uh, but I'll just give the English translation, which has been given here. He quotes from Tirupavai, the relationship between you, Lord Narayana, on one hand, and all of us on the other, is permanent and never alterable. Then another quote, I have no refuge other than you, and you have no one who is more worthy and deserving of protection than me. This is a very nice call by the devotee that you promise to extend yourself to the devotees, those in need of shelter. You promise to extend yourself to the fallen. Potita pavana hetu tava avata moshama potita prabhu na paibaya. Narottam das sings to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that you have descended into the world to purify the fallen. You won't find anyone more fallen than me, he says. So I'm, I'm a, the best candidate for your mercy. Continuing from uh, the, the quotes from Divya Prabandham by Sri Vivi Ramanujan, you are my father, my mother, my acharya. And then another one, he gives you, this you means Narayana. You are the mother, father, children, and other relatives all in one. Mm, nice. Sir. We have a special loving relationship with our mother, with our father, with all the different children, but Krishna is that all in one to everyone. You do all that a father does, all that a mother does, all that the children do by giving uh, pleasure to the parents in their childhood 
And by caring for the parents in the old age, that's the uh, parenthetical comment given here. So what, what does the father do? Father protects, maintains the child. Mother also, uh, she, she protects and maintains in different ways. There's a difference between the father's mood and the mother's mood. But Krishna is all in all, all in one. Krishna is more from, uh, Divya Prabhanda says, you are the whole universe. You are in one sense the whole universe, but I still enjoy you in your own beautiful form. Uh, and then the author of this Prabhandam says, now tell me what, what's all this mystery? I don't understand it. It's really high level stuff. <laughs> in other words, I just want to love you. And uh, all this deep philosophy, it's beyond me. So that's a mood of pure devotion. Then another sub-meaning of this, of this interpretation, or, or a, an extra, another angle on it, or a, a further elucidation of it, of the name Lokabandhu is he is related to everyone because he is their best friend, just like their father. Uh, and yeah, the exp explanation is given is that a relative, yeah, you just by being born you get so many relatives. But really, a relative is one who cares for you. Just to give one example, Karna was not raised by what nowadays you would call the biological mother or father. He was raised by foster parents. He didn't know that until Kunti told him much, much later. But he he looked up to his foster parents as his real parents. So Kunti being his mother, later in life when he came to know that, that just became incidental, tragic. Tragic, but uh, he, he wasn't going to try to reestablish a relationship at that point. So <clears throat> the real relative is one who cares for us who has concern, who has affection. So Krishna takes care of everyone. It may be the father, mother, maybe, we hope so. It's expected that the father and mother look after the children very nicely. But that's only in one life. But Krishna looks after us in every life, life after life, and at every second of our life, up to the last second, and then beyond that also. That's why he's more than any material relative. He is the father, mother, brother, sister, <laughs> solace of everyone. He's the, the real support. Doesn't mean that we have to reject our family members, but we should know that the, the love of the mother which is so much glorified in this world and not improperly, but we should know that that is an attribute which is coming from Krishna. They're doing as representatives of Krishna. Whatever love there is in this world, it is a reflection of the original love which comes from Krishna. He is the one who can actually care for us. Otherwise, relatives, they may try to care for us, they may try to help us, but they cannot. So in that way, if we're actually intelligent, we, we turn toward Krishna. Just if, if we see a child, a, a young child, the way the, the child turns to the mother, or you see the little chicks behind the, the hen, the hen running in the yard, and the, the hen 
maybe running like this and little chicks are running behind and then the hen changes course and then all the chicks change course like this. So in this way, run after Krishna. Spend, run, 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 run. Run after Krishna. <clears throat> Another nuance on this name is that just like a, a true relative always desires the best for us and therefore they instruct us as a father especially a mother they instruct they tell us what is right and wrong they tell us what we should do what we should not do so krishna does that particularly by leaving the scriptures so in this way we can understand he's our great friend because he gives us the instruction by which we can be ultimately benefited. And even we can be benefited at, at an intermediate level by him. That means materially benefited. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Chatur Vidha Bhajante Mam Jana Sukriti Narjuna Arto Jignasur Artharthi Materially also, if we approach Krishna, we can be benefited. If we are distressed, we can turn to Krishna to relieve our distress. If we want money, uh, we can turn to Krishna for that. If we're seeking knowledge, we're inquisitive about the world, intellectually inclined, we can turn to Krishna to help us. How many people pray to God, help me with my exams. Help me to try to understand all these things. And ultimately, uh, people may turn to him just in knowledge of him. That's the highest level. But for whatever reason one approaches him, one can be benefited, but the real benefit that Krishna gives them is the benefit of helping them to re-establish their eternal relationship with him. People come for various reasons to Krishna and he may reciprocate at, that, at the mundane level also, but at the same time he gives himself. That's the, the, so he's really the friend of the world, Loka Bandhu. Most people, they ask him for worldly things. They want prayas, not shreyas. They want that which is, seems to be immediately beneficial to them. But Shastra directs us towards Shreya. Jignasu Shreya Uttamam. What is our, our real ultimate benefit? Yeah. <clears throat> By providing us with worldly, worldly relatives. Uh, Krishna provides prayas. That, the worldly relatives, their inter the mother and father, they're interested in how we grow up, how our body is healthy, how we're clothed, how we're educated. So that, that is for the immediate, immediate benefit, which it considered in terms of our ultimate benefit, it, it may not be considered real benefit at all. But Krishna... Uh, ultimately appears as the guru to give us the ultimate benefit. Therefore, we find uh, in the Chaitanya Mangal, She She Parambandhu She Pita Mata Je Krishna Bhakti Data uh, uh, What is that? She Krishna Bhakti. I, I forgot. Uh, but anyway, the uh, point is that the real friend, the real She She Parambara She Peter Manjari Krishna, Krishna Bhakti Prem, She Jara Prema Data. Yeah, whoever, the real father, mother, friend is the one who gives Krishna Bhakti. That's the point. Jaha Hoite Krishna Bhakti She Guru Hoi. A very simple definition of 
guru, which we don't often hear, it's right there in Chaitanya Charitamrita, from whomever we get bhakti, that person is the guru. So guru gives shreya. Uh, from Madhva Sampradaya, Loka Bandhu is described Loka Hita Hito Padeshtatvat Loka Bandhu. Vishnu is called Loka Bandhu because he completely takes care of the desired and undesired objects to the worldly people as their status and capacity. In other words, he gives us what we want and also what we don't want. We get many things that we don't want also, don't we? We think, oh, I don't, I don't want that. But Krishna, it's all, ultimately everything is given by Krishna to us, but he's always our friend. Even when we get things we don't want. If we're pious when we get something we want, we say, oh, God's grace on me. But then we may say, oh, so many bad things are happening to me. What happened, God? Why are you doing this? But we should understand that our friend, he always acts for our benefit in all circumstances. An another meaning of um, bandhu derives from bandhan, bhadnati, he who binds, bandha, bhava bandham, we've heard the term, tied up in material existence. So Krishna, he Baladevida Bhushan, he gives the idea that he binds his devotees with the rope of love of topics about him. We we if we have love for hearing about Krishna, then that binds us more and more to Krishna. The term is there in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Pranaya Rashanaya, Pranaya Rashanaya, Pranaya Rashanaya, mm. means that he, he binds his devotees to him by love. We may not see the rope of love. The, in, in the material world, the rope of affection ties us to this material world. If that affection is transferred to Krishna, we become attached to Krishna. That's the real affection. Who the, we should know who our affection should be directed toward. Uh, similarly, one of the uh, Sri Vaishnava commentators, Sri Krishna Datta Bharadvaj. Actually, I'm not sure if he's Sri Vaishnava or not, but he's quoted regularly in these commentaries. Uh, he, he gives the same meaning. He binds devotees with his affection bhadnati prema parshena iti bandhu lokanam bandhu iti loka bandhu he's uh, he gives the meaning that one who binds the devotees with love uh, so in this way so even the father might turn against us but krishna will never never turn against us. He's, he's unfailing. The Father may turn against us. It's hard to imagine, but it is possible. Even the mother will turn against us. Well, we, we, abortion, rampant in the modern world. Or mothers abandon their children because they they don't want the trouble of raising them but Krishna will never abandon us. Here's a definition of compassion because the uh, Loka Bandhu gives the idea of his compassion upon us. Here's a definition from Amara Kosh, Sanskrit dictionary, compiled by a Buddhist, by the way. So, Kripa dayanu kampa syad anukroshaha. Compassion is the unmotivated desire to destroy others' distress. Yeah, unmotivated. 
Krishna, what does he care? He's dancing with the gopis. He's in Vaikuntha. Why should he bother about? We're in the material world. We rejected him. We're suffering. Why should he care? How much do we, free citizens, care about the people in the prison? They're in the prison. They got in the prison. They got what they deserve. And yeah, let them. what do we care about them? But Krishna's not like that. He's He keeps people in the prison. That's true because they need to be there so they don't cause trouble to others and they need to be reformed. But he's always thinking of them and trying to bring them out. In this regard, I'll quote from a lecture that Srila Prabhupada gave. Srila Prabhupada said, Therefore, Krishna is coming. Yada yada hi dharmasya glane bhavati bharata these rascals have forgotten. All right, let me go and convince them, try to bring them back. Therefore, Krishna comes. Tadatmanam shrijam yaham paritrarnaya sadhunam Those who are sadhu, devotees, they become immediately relieved by getting Krishna. And those who are rascals, they had to be killed. But that killing is also good for them, just like a father. To some sons, he gives rasgula, and to other son, slaps. But the father is the father. Either slapping or giving rasgula, he's the father. Similarly, we should not be sorry when the father gives slaps, and we should not be over jubilant when the father gives his rasgula any condition, that is devotion. A devotee is never disturbed when the father gives a slap or the master gives a slap. So anyway, Krishna is always ready to help me and to give me knowledge and to understand where is the difficulty. One of Prabhupada's favorite sayings. This is the Krishna Consciousness Movement. There is not at all difficulty. Simply because we do not take the advice of Krishna, we are suffering. This is the difficulty. This is the only difficulty. Where is the difficulty? No difficulty. Simply if you think of Krishna, you become advanced. Mammana bhava mad bhaktaha. Yoginam apisarve sham madgatenantaratmana. There is no expenditure, no loss. The gain is great. Simply if you think of Krishna, manmana bhava mad bhakta, where is the difficulty? Points that Srila Prabhupada often made. There's no loss. Why not do it? There's no difficulty to be Krishna conscious. And the example he gives in this quote is that uh, Krishna comes, uh, he uplift the sadhus and he punishes the rascals. But he also says, the rascals have forgotten. All right, let me go and convince them, try to bring them back. So it's not that Krishna just, he comes and he, he does a wholesale mowing down of all the demons. He does try to uplift them also. Thank you, Krishna. Then, uh, Satyadeva Vashishta, who, those who are following this uh, series of talks will understand that by now that Satyadeva Vashishta, he always gives uh, what we might say, an generally gives an unusual meaning or, or a unique meaning, uh, different. He's a relative, he's a modern commentator and he gives meaning, tries to find meanings that haven't been given before or are not widely known. and But it's not that he just makes it up. He justifies it with uh, pramana, evidence from Shastra, which is the proper system or the standard system for commenting on Shastra, including Vishnu Sahasranama. 
So he gives the uh, the meaning lok darshan uh, to see, to perceive, and bandha to a, to bind, to attract also. So loka bandhu. He gives that Bhagavan has this name because he binds all things that are seen. Everything in this world is bound. Uh, it's under conditions. There's, there's limited life for everything in this world, limited time of existence. Another meaning he gives, uh, similar, is that he binds all the jivas to their karma without a rope, per se, or he binds the people of this world through his Vedic teachings, and therefore he's called Loka Bandhu. In this regard, there are several quotes in Shastra. I'll give one from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 13, Text 42. Uh, Bhagavatam is hardly, not, not quoted in the commentators, but at this point I'm going to illustrate it with... Uh, <coughs> Quote from Bhagavatam: Yatha go, yatha go. Sorry, there we go. Yatha gavo nasi protas tantyang badhas chadama bihi vak tantyam nama bhi badha vahanti balim ishituhu. As a cow, or a cow or a bull, I guess, is bound through the nose by a long rope is conditioned, is under control. So also human beings are bound by v different Vedic injunctions and are conditioned to obey the orders of the Supreme. So everyone, we may say, I don't want to follow the orders of God. Everyone has to. We cannot avoid it. We are bound to. Because <clears throat> what we do, we'll get a reaction. You can't avoid it. We are bound. We are under control. So in this way, he binds the whole world and he's loka bandhu. Uh, in this connection, binding the in, from Madhva Sampradaya, uh, they give a meaning that Vishnu is called loka bandhu because the, the bondage of this world is absolutely under his control. And they clarify that Vishnu is not the creator of the bandha. He's not the creator of the bondage. He's the creator of the conditions by which there are bondage. Uh, he makes the laws of the universe. But Purusha sukha dukkhanam bhuktritve hetu ruchyate. We make our own fate. We are, we are within the great matrix set up by the Supreme Lord and we have a little independence and we make our fate. He doesn't make it per se, although we make it, but it's totally, he sets the laws for the game. We're, on, we're under his control. So we have a little independence which we use as we like. We think we're using it as we like, but then our independence is very highly limited because we have a little independence, but then what we do, we get a result which we can't avoid. So there is bondage and independence at the same time, little independence by which you, by misuse of which we make more bondage. So proper use is of that independence is to act in a way which he as our, as our best friend uh, instructs so that we can become free from material bondage and become bound to him in love. Loka bandhu ki jai. Hare Krishna. Vancha kalpa turu pyascha kripa patita nam pavan.